A very warm welcome to all my dear 7th standard children. Today we are going to see the second part of your kingdom animalia, right? So your kingdom animalia is your second unit from your second chapter, right? So in the first part we discussed about how we can classify animals into two groups. So we can classify the animals into invertebrates and vertebrates. So, the animals that does not have the backbone or the vertebral column they are called as invertebrates and the animals that have backbone or the vertebral column so they are called as vertebrates right and of course we saw the what are the 8 phylums or the extra one 9 phylums that come under invertebrates right. So, we saw what are the phylums and also we discussed about the what are the phylums that come under vertebrates right. So, in this class we are going to see what are the 8 phylums under the invertebrates in detail right. So, come on let us see the chapter. So, now let us see kingdom animalia from your second chapter second unit second part right. So, now let us see invertebrates. So, we can classify animals into two different groups invertebrates and vertebrates. So, mostly uh, we can see most of the insects they come under, under the invertebrates. So, the invertebrates does not have the backbone right. So, this invertebrates classified into 8 phylums. So, what are the 8 phylums that we discussed in the first part? Porifera, then yes, Annelida, Arthropoda and also we discussed about uh, Coelentrata, Nematoda, Platyelminthes and Echinodermata, right. So, about that only we are going to discuss in detail. So, first we are going to see the Porifera. So, now let us see Porifera. So, Porifera is the first phylum under the invertebrates. So, these animals they are actually animals. So, these animals are found in the fresh water or they are also found in the uh, sea under the sea. So, they we can see this type of animals in the uh, bottom of the water bodies in the bottom of the river or in the bottom of the sea we can see this kind of animals and this is actually uh, they are called as porous animals they are also called as sponges or porous animals. So, they are fixed into the ground and they cannot move from one place to another they are fixed in one place they will not move by themselves right. So, these are called as porous animals why they are called as porous animals because they have pores in their body. So, the water is taken through the pores and it is sent on the top on the top they will have an opening right. So, this is known as aux osculum. So, through this hole they will send send whatever they, they are taking the water and it is sent out through that top hole right. So, the example of this porifera animals they are also called as porous animal very good. So, what are the examples Cycon and Leucosilina. So, Cycon is this is a Cycon and you can see the Cycon right and then Leucosolinia. Leucosolinia is also a example of porifera right. Now, let us see about the Coelentrata. So, this is your second phylum. So, what is Coelentrata? Coelentrata they are also called as Nidaris right. So, uh, we discussed Coelentrata is also called as Nidaris and you can see these animals they are hollow sac animals. So, the example of this phylum are Hydra and Sea Anemone. So, this is Sea Anemone and this one is Hydra right. So, this is Hydra and this one is sea anemone right. So, now let us see what are the uh, uh, structure of these animals. So, these animals are hollow sac animals and they will be uh, they will have a hollow sac and their body will have be having a bag like structure and also you can see a top on the top they will have a uh, opening called mouth. So, on the top they will have opening called mouth. So, through that mouth only they will eat and they will excrete and so this mouth is surrounded by many finger like projections. So, you can see here. So, this hydra and sea anemone. So, here you can see many finger like projections coming out 
in the center they will they will have mouth and surrounded by this finger like projection so this finger like projections are called as tentacles so what is the finger like projections so this finger like projections are called as tentacles right so a sea anemone will have tentacles a hydra will have tentacles so around the mouth they will have finger like structures that is known as tentacles t n t a c l e s right yes so these animals they move from one place to another and they can be found only in the sea or in the marine places right yes so now let's see then third phylum your third phylum is about platyhelminthes so platyhelminthes platy refers to flat platy means flat and helminthes refers to worms purukal right so this type under this phylum we can see many worms examples or liver fluke so this is liver fluke this is the example of liver fluke animal and this is the tapeworm so this platy helminth and now let's see about the platy helminth as in picture so you can see this is the tape one and this is the liver fluke so this is liver fluke and this is tape one t a p e w o r m so these animals they are unsegmented they will not have segments and they will be uh, they look very flat sometimes they will look very flat uh, either it can be a ribbon shape or it will be like a leaf like structure so it will they the, the worms will be very flat and mostly they are parasite parasite means the animals that live inside the body of the other animal so matta uirinangal odambukulla irundhu idu vandu uir vaalum so that is known as parasite okay so mostly these animals are parasite this is your third phylum platy helminthes platy means flat helminthes means worms right so tape worm we can see in, in inside the intestine of the animals and we can see the liver fluke also present inside the intestine of the cattle and all okay right so now let's see the next phylum nematoda nima means thread okay so these animals they they are thread like structures and they are round in shape okay so these animals or uh, these worms will be round in shape and examples of this is round worm and ascaris so even these also uh, parasite they also a parasitic animal or, or sometimes they they can uh, they are free living also okay right so now let's see what are the round worm and ascaris so round worm and ascaris so they have cylindrical in shape i mean uh, they 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 will not have segments okay so they will be round in structure so they a puru tani taniya we cannot see any lines on this right so this is about nematoda nematoda is also called as ascalminthes so now let's see the next phylum annelida annelida refers to ana means segments that is uh, um, and then lida uh, lida means form okay so we can see what are the examples of annelida is this is earthworm manpuru right so you can see the earthworm moving so we can see some lines on it right so mostly the annelida is segmented so they have segments they have uh, uh, they are composed of rings so the body will be very soft and they are composed of rings and the locomotion is through the body on the body they will have that form of setae so that is known as setae or parapodia right so we can see the leech so this is the leech so the leech is moving through the locomotion of through the uh, lateral appendages so the locomotion of this annelidae is through the lateral appendages or in the form of setae or parapodia right so mostly annelida body will be very soft they are segmented right yes so what are the examples of annelida earthworm and leech so earthworm and leech so these are all the examples of the annelida right yes so now let's see the next phylum 
arthropoda. So, arthropoda is the next phylum. So, under arthropoda we can see many uh, animals. So, what are the animals? Examples are butterfly, cockroach, crab, housefly, honeybee, spider, scorpion and prawn. So, mostly the bodies of the arthropoda. So, arthro refers to joint ok, arthro refers to joint, poda refers to legs. So, mostly these animals have jointed legs. So, if we see, if we take butterfly legs, they are jointed, cockroach jointed, Gra crab also that will be a jointed legs right. So, arthropoda is the jointed legs and uh, we can see the body covering, the body covering will be covered with a hard shell. So, this hard shell is made up of calcium carbonate. So, it is nothing but the exoskeleton, it is known as exoskeleton, right. So, we can see the exoskeleton, right. And butterfly, they have the jointed legs, right. So, what are the uh, examples? Let us see in the picture. So, butterfly, crab, and then cockroach, housefly, cockroach, then honey bee spider so you can see the honey bee right so they will have an exoskeleton uh, the outer body the outer covering of the animal will have a exoskeleton so uh, 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 bony structure so that is so come under arthropoda okay and some more examples scorpion prawn so they also come under arthropoda okay scorpion and prawn so, you can see here in this, so the prawn, the prawn inside the water. So, mostly uh, these animals have the exoskeleton, they have a structure of uh, uh, bony like structure and you can see the scorpion, spider, they will have the body covering with the exoskeleton. Mostly they are uh, these uh, shells, they will have shells or the body covering is made up of calcium carbonate, right? Yes. So, this is about arthropoda. So, this arthropoda is the largest phylum in the invertebrates. So, this is the first largest phylum, right? Yes. So, now let us see about the next one, mollusca. So, mollusca is the second largest phylum, right, in the invertebrates, which is the second, we can see so much of uh, arthropoda. The next one is mollusca, right? So, what are the examples of mollusca? Mucel, snail, octopus, cuttlefish. So, uh, right? So, this mu cell will have two shell, whereas that snail will have one shell. Okay, even these body, they, uh, their body is unsegmented. Whereas, if we see nemat, I mean um, nematoda or the arthropoda, they are segmented body, but if we uh, see the mollusca, so mollusca is a unsegmented body and the body will be very soft. So, their body will be very soft, mostly the move, movement of these animals is using with the help of the muscles. So, with the help of the muscles only they move, right. So, they come under mollusca, right. So, let us see the second, uh, uh, the next examples, this is so snail and mollusca. Mucel, cuttlefish, octopus. So, these cuttlefish and octopus we can see under the water, under the sea. So, these also come under mollusca, right. So, cuttle sea and octopus, they, they are also example of mollusca, right. And next, let us see the last phylum, that is your eighth phylum. It is about echinodermata. So, echinodermata, dermata means the outer skin and echino means spines, it refers to spine. So, mostly these animals will have spiny outer skin. So, the outer skin is very spiny, ok. So, echino means mulumula arkadhe, dermato means outer covering, adhe velipura tol, ok. So, mostly these animals have that uh, spiny structures on the body. Examples of this is starfish sea urchin and brittle star. So, these are the examples and mostly these animals are seen under the sea, ok. So, what are the examples of echinodermata? Brittle star, sea urchin and starfish. So, these come under 
Echinodermata. So, we can, uh, they show the radial symmetry and mostly they will be, uh, they will look either in the star shaped or, or maybe in the ball shape. Okay, so these are called as Echinodermata, right. So, almost in this class, you have learnt about what are the phylums, what are the phylums under the invertebrates, right. So, we discussed about the 8 phylums and along with this 8 phylum in the previous class, I would have told you about the ninth phylum which was recently added. So, that is Tenophora, Tenophora is the animals that they exhibit some light on their body, right. So, you will study about Tenophora in your higher studies, in your higher standards. So, but if you in this seventh standard, if you learn, learn about this eight phylum, that is enough. So, thorough this eight phylums. What are the eight phylums that we discussed under the invertebrates? So, first one we discussed about Porifera. Porifera is also called as porous animals. Examples of Porifera is sponges or we can say Cycon or Leucosolemia, right? And the second phylum that we discussed is about what is the second phylum? Yes, the second phylum is about the sealant rate or it is called as nidaris, right. So, what are the examples that we saw? Yes, hydra, sea anemone. So, this nidaris, nidaria uh, phylum, they are also called as hollow sac animals, right. And the third one that we saw is platyhelminthes, they are flat worms, example tapeworm and liver fluke, right. So, mostly these anim, uh, the platyhelminthes unsegmented, they will not have segments, right and then they are mostly parasite, right. And then the fourth phylum that we discussed is nematoda, nematoda is also called as thread like worms. So, examples are round worm and ascaris. So, they also does not have segments, right. And the fifth phylum that we discussed is annelida. So, annelida examples are earthworm and leech. So, these annelida have segments on their body, right. So, examples of this is earthworm and leech we saw and mostly they move with the help of the in the form of setae or parapodia or through the lateral appendages, right. And mostly if you see earthworm, earthworm is uh, found in the uh, soil that is why they are called as earthworm and the earthworm uh, keeps the soil aerated and also fertile. So, that is why it is the it is also called as a farmer's friend. So, earthworm is uh, uh, good for the soil, it keeps the soil fertile right. So, that is what we discussed about the annelida. So, the next one is arthropoda. Arthropoda is the largest phylum in the invertebrates and what are the examples that we saw? Butterfly, scorpion, honeybee, housefly, cockroach, all that right. So, they all they all come under arthropoda. Arthropoda, they are, have jointed legs. They Their body is divided into three segments, head, uh, thorax and abdomen, right. So, if you take cockroach, the cockroach will have head, thorax and abdomen and they have jointed legs and their body is covered with a outer shell which is made up of calcium carbonate, it is nothing but exoskeleton, right. Yes, after arthropoda we discussed about mollusca. So, mollusca is the second largest invertebrates and examples of mollusca that we saw is mucel, snail, Cuttlefish, octopus. So, they come under mollusca and uh, mollusca they have soft body and also their body is does not have segments and they move with the help of their muscles, right. Yes. The last phylum that we discussed is about echinodermata. Echino means spines, dermata means outer covering, outer skin. So, the outer covering is made full of spines. So, mullu mullar on the outer covering and the examples that we saw is brittle star and then starfish and then sea urchin. So, they are examples of the echinodermata and mostly these uh, uh, echinodermata, they show radial symmetry, they will be either in the star uh, shape or in a ball shape. So, that is what in this class we have discussed. So, go through the phylum and again and again because the terms will be new year for you, right. So, you must have not uh, come across the words of these phylums, okay. So, go through the phylums again and again, write and see the words many times, at least 5 times or 10 times. So, that when you write in exams, you will not do spelling mistakes, okay. So, Today in this class, you learnt about the 8 phylums of the invertebrates, right. So, hope I will meet you, meet you in the next class 
about the vertebrates, right? So, do the self assessment and take the study material and write it and do the self assessment, it will be easy for you to do the uh, when you study in the higher standards, right? So, thank you, children, for watching. Have a good day.